most of the, the Israelis are secular Jews, but of course they use this to justify uh, that this is their city. And then you find all these uh, crazy Christians, I call them. They call themselves Christian Zionists. Their theory is, uh, is completely unchristian. Because, I mean, when they say all the Jews have to gather here, the Jews, the Israelis, are happy about this part of the, the theory. But then, so that the Messiah can come, and when the Messiah comes, they have to become Christians. And those who don't become Christians, then they will have to be killed. I mean, what kind of a religion is this? What kind of a God is this God? When the Messiah comes, if they don't believe, then they have to be. Israel goes along with them. They accept the fact, the first part of it, which is having them come over here. What that makes many people say, well, if this is, if this is God's will, I mean, who wants God's will? Israelis are able to dismiss it. They don't think about it. It's the land of Israel. That's, it's in the Bible. It's unproblematic. It's ours. We came back. You guys, <laughs> Palestinians are intruders. You know, and uh, you know, this whole claim that actually isn't true, but the whole claim that, that there's an organic tie between the Israelites and the Hebrews of the Bible and Jews of today, you know, is what makes that tie. So, you know, this is our land. Just go back and look at the Bible. The, and that's where Israel, of course, gets a lot of uh, support from Christian fundamentalists. Not just from the Jewish community and, and abroad. We don't use the word Palestinians. We talk about Arabs in a very undifferentiated way. We never use the word occupation. You don't talk about settlements. They're communities. You don't talk about settlers. They're Jewish residents of communities. So the whole language has sanitized everything. If you would talk to people, what is the occupation? Where is the occupation? What is a Palestinian? People wouldn't know what in the hell you're talking about. And that's where Israel has really won. It's insulated its people so much from political reality that's 100 meters away. And so in that sense, Israel wins because it's taken the whole issue of Palestine off the table for Israel. They don't even think about it. We're not here as imperialists. We have returned home as the indigenous people to our own homeland. And there's basically nothing that the world or the Arab world can do about it. Whatever attempts they've tried won't succeed. Not only are we looking over the Temple Mount here, you know, the place where the uh, Golden Dome is, you know, that's the place of the Holy of Holies. This is what the Arab world wants and this is what they'll never get. We're not talking about sovereignty. You can't compromise on sovereignty. No one hands away their homeland. This is not a multicultural democratic society. This is not another Australia or America or France or England. No. This is a Jewish state for Jewish people. And we find in Surah Al-Anbiya only one more reference in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a town. Remember the town? And he had destroyed the town, punish it by destroying it. And then expelled the people of the town. وَحَرَامٌ عَلَى قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَبْنَاهَا And then he banned the people of the town that they could never return to reclaim that town as their own. أَنَّهُ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ they are in, in, in a state of permanent exclusion, banned from returning to that town. Hatta, until, until when? Hatta, idha futihat, ya'juj wa ma'juj, until God and Magog are released. Wa hum in kulli hadabin yansilun. And Gog and Magog, when they are released, they spread out in every direction, which is one meaning. And if you spread out in every direction, then you'll take control of the world. The land, the sea, the air. 
Read Toynbee. Read Arnold Toynbee. Read a book called Civilization on Trial. I'm giving you good books to read, incidentally. Not comic books. Read Arnold Toynbee, the British historian. Read a book entitled Civilization on Trial. You should get it on the internet. It was written somewhere around 80 years, 90 years ago, 1935, somewhere around 70, 80 years ago. And in that book, Arnold Toynbee points out that modern Western civilization has risen upon the world with a mission to take control of the whole world. And he says, the land, the sea, the air, everything. He said it in that book. They spread out in all directions and with the indestructible power they take control of the world. For the first time in history, one people will control the whole world. Nobody ever did that before. The other meaning is that they descend from every height. So they target you and they impose themselves upon you. You can't get away from them. Which town is it? Which town is it? That is linked with Gog and Magog, which is the biggest footprint of all. Which town? We used this methodology that we looked at all the ahadith of Prophet Muhammad Islam pertaining to Gog and Magog to see whether there was any town mentioned by him that is linked to Gog and Magog. And when we had studied all the ahadith, we found only one town, only one in the hadith. And it is Baytul Baqdis, Jerusalem, Al-Quds. And so we said, well, here is a hypothesis which is already resting on fairly firm foundations since this is a town mentioned in the hadith that is connected with Gog and Magan. So let's look and try on the shoe and see whether it fits. It fits. Why can't we do that? So then we looked at Jerusalem. And we found that this is a town which was destroyed by Allah. And Banu Israel were expelled from the town. Even though Allah had given the land to them. And so, we recognized the town to be Jerusalem. And we asked the question, who are those who liberated Jerusalem? and brought Banu Israel back to Jerusalem. If you can recognize who they are, you have recognized God and Magog. But Iqbal it was who said, and I now have to quote him again in Urdu, and they can't take it away from him. You can't do it. It's there. <laughs> Some of you will say, well, we heard this before, you know. But we never thought about it. All the forces of Gog and Magog have now been released. It's not just that they have been released from behind the barrier bit by Zulkarnain in Surah al of the Quran. More than that. They've all been released and they've all spread out over the world. All. So this is the world order of Gog and Magog. That is what Iqbal is saying. Chashmi Muslim Dethli Tafsir Harfi and Siru. Now Muslims, you better turn your direct your eyes, direct your attention to the word. Yan Sirun. Direct your attention to the word Yan Sirun. Only one scholar 
in the whole world of Islam. Only one not only recognized it, but proclaimed it. What is this word Yad Silur? He's referring to the Quran. That's what he's doing. Is the strange marriage that has taken place in the last 40, 50 years, the totally bizarre alliance between two groups of people. If you don't understand this, you will not understand Trump's announcement. Simple as that. This strange marriage is between Christian Zionists and Jewish Zionists. Why is it strange and who are Christian Zionists? Christian Zionists, they're not Jews. They are Christians. Generally, they're a strand of Protestant Christianity. Arab Christians are not Zionists. Catholics are not Zionists. They don't agree with this philosophy. Arab Christians are some of the greatest allies with that we have because they can critique the Zionism of other strands of Christianity. Nestorians, Maronites, many of these Christians, they are totally opposed to Zionism and they side with Palestinian rights. But here in America, there is a strand of fundamentalist Protestant Christianity that calls itself Zionist Christians. This is Roy Moore, the politician. He said, what, I don't know about you, but when I heard about Jerusalem's announcement, where the king of kings, i.e. Jesus, is going to come back, it is because President Trump declared Jerusalem to be the capital, that's why Jesus is gonna come back. So what is, what is Christian Zionism? Christian Zionism, every Muslim memorize this, is the belief that some segments of Christians have that before Jesus comes, all Jews must be in the Holy Land. Until they are there, Jesus is not gonna come. So they believe that in order for Jesus to come, the state of Israel has to be supported blindly, completely. Now, why did I say the strange alliance? Because Christian Zionists believe when Jesus comes, what's gonna happen to those Jews? What is gonna happen? Do you know what they believe? They believe some of them will convert and the rest will be heard in the great Armageddon, the great war between good and evil that will take place towards the end of times. Christian Zionists are not helping Israel because they love the people there. Now, Jewish Zionists obviously don't believe that Jesus even exists, much less he's going to come back. And yet, they are forming this unholy alliance, this love, this marriage, not of love, of convenience. This is a marriage, they hate each other's guts theologically. Theologically, they are completely separate from one another. The one group literally believes the other group is going to be killed. And yet they're supporting them. Why? Because they are a token, a sacrificial pawn. Go ahead, be we want the Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior to come back. And can you believe this marriage has formed a strong alliance? And this is the main reason why our president is announcing what he's announcing. To shore up publicity amongst these far-right radical Christian groups. This is an agenda. It's not that he himself is a Christian and he cares about this. He knows what buttons to press to get the uh, benefit and the support of these far-right people. And subhanAllah, once I asked a rabbi who I got close to and I was friends with, I asked him a very blunt question. I said, don't be, don't be you know, uh, uh, offended, but can you explain to me, you are a, 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 you know, a person who believes in religion, you're a religious person, can you explain to me how you can take the support of a group of people who think that you're going to be killed and they're expediting your killing? How can you take support from those types of people? I actually asked him this and his response says, well, we don't believe that Jesus is going to come. So if they're going to give us money and power, we'll take it. That's literally what the rabbi said. We don't believe he's going to come back. So is he going to hand us money and power? That's their stupidity and foolishness. And we will continue to take it. And that is the philosophy that they have now. So we as Muslims need to understand Christian Zionism is even more dangerous for us than Jewish Zionism. Christian Zionism believes that Jesus wants them to do this. And that is why this unholy alliance has been created.